brought up is a couple of times making uh, metaphors or parallels between how we train jujitsu and how we train, uh, how boxing is trained. And I want to delve into that a little bit because I think I was trying to get my head around that as well. And I was thinking it seemed to be a relation to how you thought that boxing is, is a sport and jujitsu is maybe not trained as a sport. And I was thinking, is it say for rear naked choke defense where your first emphasis would be to uh, tuck the chin, bring the shoulders up, which is something that everyone learns over time, that that is probably the most important thing to do. But yet to a beginner, we might teach them to pull the hand down after it's already over our head and clear the neck. And is it that you're kind of making the comparison that we might teach jujitsu the way we would teach boxing if it was teaching a boxer instead of to how to parry to how to respond after being hit five times? Uh, I'm, I'm more thinking when I compare the boxing, I'm more thinking about the sport aspect of it. And also, uh, you can use the same as wrestling. Uh, let's say, a uh, stupid question. Have you ever seen a wrestler do a double leg without a snap down? So it's a, always a setup. Mm -hmm. So uh, everything in boxing and wrestling is usually taught with a setup. So in jiu-jitsu, let's say you just, oh, I take an underhook, you know. So how do you, how do you take an underhook? For example, you see many videos of, uh, like, open up any YouTube video about turtle attacks. And people are like, oh, I get a seatbelt here. Now I take it back. So I'm like, no, 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 no. Show me how you get the seatbelt. Because I, I, I can tell you my own you know, experience is not that easy when you do defense nicely. So you have to uh, fake it open, play tricks, you know, timing wise. And then like, you know, like, like you would play open a boxing guard. Mm -hmm. So fake left and right, move around and then lure them out to reach maybe. And then you're in. So first of all, we have to talk about that when we're teaching jiu-jitsu, so it's a sport. And also, what, uh, what my, let's say again, uh, jokingly, what my uh, black belt, Chris Paint, I guess, from Stafford said nicely that, I'm trying to teach jiu-jitsu when, when you fight out of the posture. So you would go like, uh, you know, it's not like technique, 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 but if you fail, do it again. If you fail, do it again. So... I'm trying to more like, a, like I'm fighting out of the posture and then coming in. I'm not trying to build like a lock float or something. I'm being very, like you saw in the Banda video, somebody gets underhook, I pummel in. Mm -hmm. Somebody gets underhook, I pummel in. So I can build a complex technical, you know, exchange there. Like, you know, you do this, I do that. You do then this, I do that. And those, but that makes, takes super much time. So, and, uh, but if I just, you know, deny you the pummeling and pummel elbow in, I'm doing a more like a, you know, wrestling and sport manner. I'm keeping it simple and I'm just referring to my posture. And let's say, I don't know, I have a, I have a grilled chicken, you know, open guard retention system or guard, whatever it was, whatever it is. So I'm fighting out of the one position. I'm keeping the structure like a guard up and I'm fighting out of that position. If I fail, I pull everything back. So there's a, there also like open guard zero point. So when I'm talking about boxing and stuff, I'm saying like we should concentrate on those positions and maybe the options what we teach are then more optional, so to speak. If you want to do more, you can do more, but you can actually get away with less. And also, I guess I'm advocating uh, one theory would be that I think in jiu-jitsu we teach, we teach too much crazy combinations. Mm -hmm. that we never seen enough that we never seen a fight happening in a you know mid to high level sport our sport mm -hmm. so because people run out of good techniques very early you know and then then the sweeps has to get crazier and crazier i'm saying that keep the open guard still do the same goddamn tripod sweep forever understand so you don't have to get like a but then the question is how do you make it interesting because people get bored that's a good question Yes. And the question is, you have to teach jiu-jitsu as a sport. So, because if you make a, like, a, if somebody does boxing and then you teach them a jab and then it's like introduction phase and that's it. And then another day you teach a jab, that's it. It becomes boring in a week. But if you do jab games, yep. then the jab will get, 
it will stay interesting forever because you can do jab games against better guys and everything else, you know, mm-hmm. have different rules about jab games, you know. So, and let's say arm bar from side control, like, you know, far arm side control. Mm-hmm. If you just do a typical class of, you know, half an hour warm up, three techniques uh, randomly picked, and then you spar in half an hour, this is a very bad class mm-hmm. because you will not integrate those three techniques to a game later. So how I would do it, let's say, is sport manner would be you, as a beginner, you take the really close to armbar finish position and you resist. If your success ratio is like, you know, five out of 10, you move one step back, you move one step back from the armbar and you try it again resistance till the end. And black belt, you can start pretty much from the pass, having the underhook, and then you work yourself against resistance to the armbar. So that simple armbar that you learn pretty much in first day can stay interesting forever because you add resistance to it. And it becomes like isolation, sparring, isolation, drilling, depends on your level. Because against another black belt, I think if you're a black belt, you should not do 100% because their defense is good when you're learning something new. So against other black belt, you would use maybe, they would use maybe 60, 70% resistance mm-hmm. and you would you know, try the armbar. If you succeed too much, raise the resistance. If, you, uh, if you're a black belt and you do it against purple belt, go 100%. They mm-hmm. can resist 100% and your job is to do armbar. Because you have to do those techniques, what you see in reality, yeah? Yep. Like scientific process is you, you watch the reality and you test uh, you test the reality, and if the results are different than reality, your test is wrong. So we should watch fights, you know, purple belts and up probably more, and also understand that also innovation happens in a bottom level and see what, you know, what techniques come through. But basically, we should do those locks and submissions and sweeps. And if you see what actually works in the highest level, it's not much, actually. There's certain amount of techniques that works, you know, again and again and again, and there's some more less, and there is also some exceptions. And those techniques you can pretty much, let's say, stupidly learn in a year. Mm-hmm. After that, you're done. So then how do you keep the interest? That means drilling, resistance training, progressive resistance training, and then keep it interesting with games. Mm-hmm. But, but people don't do that often, and then it becomes like, you know, like regular jitsu class, it becomes like a crazy De La Riva sweep from something that you actually never seen and you use and you go like, why we're doing this? Because the teaching methodology is more technique based. So guys, you know, you know those things. Oh, guys, you're here, you know? Yep. And then random crazy five times switching grips, something falling sweep. And then you end up in a sparring and you can never pull it off. And that's also another... another Usually that uh, coaches, um, I will mess with coaches' head like this, that it's, uh, you have to take it, uh, the, now what I'm saying, in a specific context, because it can be argued and you know, said, that's not about it, that's not correct. But let's say in two, in one week, an ordinary person trains twice. Mm-hmm. And it's fair to say that in those two classes, you've learned two techniques. Yeah, like, you know, maybe they're connected, maybe they're not. So in one week, you have four new things that your coach picked for you, and you can never forget. So in two weeks, you have eight things. And then in a month, you have 16 new sweeps, submissions that you can never forget. Mm. So you can do the math, yeah? Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. And then you can go like, Preet, it's not fair because, you know, not everything is technique. Okay, I will give you that. I say, let's cut it in half. Let's say eight you will have eight new sweep submissions. I'm also talking on a stage, not like, you know, first day learning, because then it's the techniques are more, you know, you learn more stuff, but later after a beginning stage, you're, you know, I'm talking about that stage more. Yep. And then still you have eight new things in a month. You can, you have to put in your game, work your timing and everything. And as a black belt, I cannot do it. No. I cannot put eight new things in my game. And we're asking this from people. And you know that what, what you ask any beginner, like white belt, blue belt, and uh, you ask them that everybody says it's too much. It's too much techniques. They forget the every week techniques. There's no time to you know, practice them, to figure out the timing against different opponents, and they're struggling. And it also makes them look stupid because it, they think it's their fault. 
and it's actually it's not. But if you if you only would teach, let's say, you know, let's talk about armbar, far ar, far side armbar, you would do it uh, like a, a month. Then people would say, oh, but it would be boring. Yes, if you teach it in a technique technique manner, it would be very interesting for a month if you do it like always with a progressive resistance alive drilling. Mm -hmm. And then it, people would be very interesting because if you get success, you just move further from the goal and you start from the later from the goal, yeah? Okay. And you just work yourself again towards that arm bar. And you really can pull it off in a sparring because you're mimicking reality. Mm -hmm. But if you do a typical class of, you know, half an hour warm-up, one technique, 10 minutes dead, second technique, 10 minutes dead, sometimes even third, and then you roll, you create an environment where you never, you never basically, as a beginner, try those things you learned in a class in a sparring because the resistance kicks in, the timing is there and your failing rate is too big and your motivation goes down right away. Okay. So in that sense, I'm more, I, because I haven't, I haven't learned jujitsu as a, I guess we did like, you know, progressive drilling, but as a more, as even like a sport, like a concept of sport, it was still a little bit an art. Yeah, uh, but so um, these days I'm advocating more. We have to teach it more as an as a sport. More still, it's an art, you know, and uh, sport also is an art form. But uh, I think that you know those lock flows, or you sometimes people do techniques very specific. You know, you open the guard, you do a knee slide, you take underhook and do armbar. Mm -hmm. That's the worst teaching method ever in jujitsu because you give them super specific option from the from the you know from the chaos. Mm -hmm. And for that option to happen, it has to be a miracle. So I rather teach like, a, you know, like a, how to work a jab. And so it's like many, like a, you learn to make options yourself. Like if you, uh, okay. so, so timing is like, okay, options are here and there, and then you work and they resist, but they have to lose their coach, their training partner. So it's about, you learn also timing, when to change techniques and not specific poetry. Like a, just one, two, three, four. But because in a fight, you know that they're going to resist and nothing's working alike. If you have to do five techniques to work an armbar, that means they have to do a five consistent mistakes. What's the likelihood of that happening? Mm. So they look cool for beginners. I know why they're appealing, but those techniques will fall apart like in a second when you try them in a fight. It yeah. can be that specific uh, technique can also be some coaches polished technique after 10 years. So that will be their, their specific exception that they, that they built for 10 years. But what is your argument to teach it to others that it take you 10 years to force that specific route, route you understand? So people have to find their own combinations that work for them. So how do you build up that environment? And only by sports, doing the live drilling, progressive resistance, and people learning about the timing and making their own choices. Sure. So more about, you know, that's, a, I, I hope you got the, like an like a idea that I'm advocating more. I think I, I think I did. So it's more about giving them the main tools or like maybe the main notes. If I was to use a musical metaphor, we're giving them the main notes and then letting them play their own song or get the like on their own timing. Yeah, using, the, do, using those, you know, those positions also escaping wise, the Hawking running man. So I am never about escapes. I'm about survival. Mm -hmm. So I will make you survive using those four positions. I will teach you how to keep them, how to transfer between them, and escape is yours. So you can do a stiffer, rollover, pull guard, spin, stand up, who cares? You would have to know those options. But what we will pick is about like a specific situation mm -hmm. so we could do a drills where your main objective will be safe and then if there's a call out drill escape like a 10 minute 10 second window or if the drill is you can just find escapes yourself and then you feel when do you escape because it's a feeling process and they can resist more they can resist less and you will figure out the timings and when to do what mm -hmm. but my 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 thing is to keep you safe like, let's say, in a boxing also, I give you a footwork. I teach you to bob and weave and slip and duck and then keep your arms up. And then punching, when to punch, you have to figure out yourself mm -hmm. because that's what you find out with uh, working with a resisting, progressively resisting opponent, doing drills, 
but you have to be safe that you don't get hit and then you figure out what the time you have to punch. Okay. So I'm more about that. Okay. And so when you would teach the arm bar and have progressive drills doing that, then when would you teach uh, in that class or, or just in general, the defense to that arm bar? Uh, that's a good question because uh, I'm also struggling that it's uh, like, let's say struggling with uh, teaching it more as a sport than a sport because I haven't learned it that way myself, mm -hmm. but I also see how wrestlers and boxers do it. Then I'm trying to move forward more like towards the sport aspect of it. So our typical class is like maybe 10, 12 minutes of warm up, then uh, 18 minutes, maybe uh, technique like introduction, trying stuff out and 30 minutes of drilling with the, uh, progressive resistance, uh, the same techniques, and having feedback loops and everything else in it. So uh, what, what's the fun part also, what I did I think last year, was uh, I taught uh, uh, Dars Anaconda defense in my club for, I think, two or three months. And what happened was everybody got good in Dars's and Anacondas. You understand? Yep. Because finishing Dars's and Anacondas was interesting because I upped the de defense. So I taught people uh, what is the basic understanding of darts and anaconda, how the, those stroke works. And then I started to teach them escapes. And then we did progressive drills. So if they could escape, they could hunt for darts and anacondas better. Mm -hmm. And what happened is anacondas and darts, they got better by themselves because people were interested in killing those defenses. So they got to learn anything, everything about how to, how to destroy stuff you know, still it was a defense class, so they had to mostly give them a way out, but they can always develop also chokes. Because when you, when you don't do defense, what happens is uh, the people get bored finishing submissions. Understand? Because if the defense is low, they do anaconda, and they do it again, and they, could, they can't escape, and then motivation goes down, and you, you want a new lock. Yeah. So it's weird that if you teach the defense also, and I, I tried it last year in my, in my club. I literally did it like, and people just anaconda darts three months, so I could do both skills. I could do defense and uh, actually attack in three months together. So if you ask a question, how you would teach an armbar, then in that case, I would say, uh, do an armbar. And then I would have to, in some classes, show the defender the right things to do against an armbar and do it slow, so your injury risk is low. And then another guy that finishing armbar tries to overcome those things. But the defender has to do the right thing. Otherwise, you're just, you know, getting, the, trying to finish an armbar against the stupid people, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that would not get you anywhere. So defense has to be intelligent. So they have to do the right thing, you know, like some hitchhike stuff or whatever I put in my YouTube, you know, turning the, Reverse hitchhike, you know, yep. maybe you have seen that. So I would have to teach them the right things, what to do, so they could develop their defense also and also lose. But it's fun to lose because you know what you have to do and you just make it better. And if you make it better, people are, again, more interesting of finishing those arm bars because your defense is up again and I'm still having fun. Because if you don't up your defense, it's getting boring to finish those arm bars. That's why... Also, I use the methodology of moving away from the armbar, you know, got it, getting more, more and more further away from armbar because it makes it interesting because it's harder to get to the armbar then. So you can make the drill interesting by moving away or also upping the defense or both. So you okay. can actually both ways defense and then, you know, they attack and they lose or they, you do attacks and just teach the uh, bottom guy to get smarter. So give them ideas that they can play with as a defensive partner. And then their also defense actually gets really good. But they also learn to lose. And it's fun to try defense when you lose, when you're training partner as a coach. So there's nothing personal. You have to lose. Yeah? So their mindset of losing is different and they're having more fun experimenting with defense and losing. Mm -hmm. So I'm more about teaching like that. And I think it makes more sense. That is fascinating, the idea of you know, focusing then on defense as a way to improve people's offense. Um, I hadn't thought of it like that's that. That's the only way pretty much to push the defense. Uh, it's the only way to push the attack up is to have a defense. 
Otherwise, everybody got bored. That makes sense.